Yes, yes. What's going on, good people? Welcome, welcome. My name is MC Till with Everybody's Hip Hop Label. You are tuned in to the Boom Bap Chat number 43. Very, very excited about tonight. Before we jump into the conversation, uh, make sure if you don't have it yet, make sure you pick up your book, the Boom Bap Review. You can start reading it for free at boombapreview.com. So check that out, please. And a big shout out to everybody's records here in Cincinnati, Ohio, over in Pleasant Ridge. If you're in the city, go check them out, support them. And uh, if you're out of town, just check out everybody's hip, everybody's records.com and uh, get you some good music there. So tonight we have an incredible artist, uh, really dope dude, phenomenal MC. We want to welcome the one and only, tonight we have Akbar. Give it up for Akbar, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's the vinyl. Yes. Dope, dope. Dope. Akbar, welcome to the show, man. How are you today? I'm great. I appreciate the invite and the introduction, bro. Yeah, yeah I'm good. I'm, 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 good. I'm well, brother. Thanks for asking. No doubt, man. Yeah. No doubt. It's good to have you here. Um, on the Boom Bap chat, we like to show appreciation. <clears throat> and so I want to swing it over to my man, Ayo Masa, to show some love. Go ahead, Ayo. Man, Akbar, bro, you... I just like one of the things that we do on the show is like we like to give our guests their roses. So um, I remember the first time I met you, man, at the Bob shop and you was battling like three or four MCs, man. I thought you was a superhero, bro. <laughs> like I was just like, I can't believe this dude is like decapitating these cats with calm, no profanity. And I was like, man, I want like, I was like, man, I want to be like this dude, man. And I remember I spit my rhyme to you and what you told me, you was like, man, if that's what you want to do, you need to read more and just keep practicing, keep doing what you're doing. I said and that. I took them word, yeah, man. And ever since, man, it's no me without you, Akbar. So uh, I just want to give you your roses, man. You are an icon in my eyes. Um, you are like a legend in Chicago. Um, amazing brother. I learned so much from you. Um, and I just want to let you know how much you mean to me, bro. Like you, you, I look at you like you're my big brother, man. And I appreciate um, everything that you instilled in me. You was definitely a mentor to me. So I just definitely want to give you your roses and give you your props today, man. Um, to whoever watching it to the world, you know what I'm saying? So salute. I love you, man. Um, I appreciate you. And I always wanted to be a member of the Mental Giants. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I knew it was a two-man crew. But I was like, maybe one day I could be an honorary member of the Mental Giants. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man, salute, man, and respect. For real. You, brother, I appreciate you, man. You know how you know how we go way back, man. I mean, you mentioned the Bob Shop. So that just right there, like, tells you, man, like, we go back to the 90s era, man, like, when That's it was so. really fun and it was, like, really... Like we was really just in this, you know what I mean? Like for yeah. the love and um, not that we still aren't, but then it was like, no doubt, like we really just was doing this for the art form. And like, you know, meeting you was just like one of those things that like, I remember that, like, you know what I'm yeah. saying? I remember, I don't remember what I told you, but I do remember like meeting you. And I kind of, I remember that night, you know what I mean? And I remember yeah. like us like connecting and like seeing you do your thing after that. Right. It was like beautiful. It's like to see like your your talent, brother. Like that's undeniable. Yeah. Like I can't take credit for that. So like you know, just for you to say what you say about me, it's like I'm just humbled by that. And yeah, man, I appreciate the the you know the big ups, man. Yeah, but you know yeah. you you're super talented, man. And this is you know sometimes you know we we meet each other for reasons, man. It's like yeah. we inspire each other, you know, when we're supposed to, man. So yeah, that's Absolutely. what's up. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> yeah, right on. So you mentioned, uh, Ayo Moss mentioned Chicago and you know, you've had such a presence in Chicago, but you're not originally from Chicago. Is that right, Akbar? Uh, born in the Bronx and the Bronx. Uh, lived in Chicago for, I was here in the eighties and um, been back and forth between Chicago, New York, and even, even um, California out there for a minute. But Chicago is like, that's my, my second home, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So yeah, but I'm, I'm originally from the Bronx though. I was born in New York. That's what, really my roots. Like that's my original roots, you know. Yeah. Yeah. What took you to Chicago? My parents moved to Chicago. Uh actually it was 79 when I first moved to Chicago, to be really like mm. specific. I moved to Chicago. It was 78. 
77, it's like 77, 78. I won't say 79 because I remember where I was in 79, specifically because that's when Sugar Hill came out with the Rapper's mm, Delight uh, and I was in New York. And that kind of like was a pivotal moment for me. Like I knew that I wanted, not that record didn't make me, didn't convince me that I wanted to become an MC, but that record was just part of like that whole wave. But um, actually Super Rhymes was why I, mm. that was the record that really convinced me that I wanted to be an MC. It was just that record. I know you guys will know who Super Rhymes uh, Jimmy Spencer, he actually passed away not too long ago, but mm. that that record is why I started rapping, man. But um, but yeah, so I came to Chicago and man, and just continued what I loved doing. But I moved to Chicago in the 70s, in the 70s, and then moved back to New York later. And um, it's been like a back and forth thing with me with yeah. Chicago and New York, you know what I mean? Yeah, what, but what? I came here when it really wasn't a lot of, when there was really no hip hop on the scene. So I'm considered one of the first guys really to bring it to the table, you know, like to bring the elements of hip hop to Chicago. One of the first dudes to do that. Yeah. And what was that like? Like if, you know, if someone was doing a, a documentary on Chicago hip hop and, and the, you know, how it started, like, what would you tell that person? Like, what was it like, you know, what was the early days of Chicago hip hop like? Um, I mean, I've, I've been getting reached out. A lot of people have been reaching out to me because of that, because now it's like a, a time where people are reflecting back to uh, doing a lot of documentaries on the history of Chicago, the history of graffiti and the history of, you know, just a lot of a lot of historical documentaries. So people have been reaching out, man. I mean, asking me my because my name comes up a lot mm -hmm. and people reach out to me because they keep saying, hey, I keep hearing your name. You know, we're doing this documentary and your name keeps coming up. So we need to like, can we get you? Can we interview you? Because, you know, they say you're one of the first writers. And I, I feel like I need to tell my own story. So, I mean, I, yeah. Um, when I, when I first came to Chicago, man, I was homesick. Basically I was, I was, I had just left New York when it was like block parties and, mm. you know, hip hop was really like, that was really my, that was all I really was exposed to as a youth, like in the streets, you know? So I started doing graffiti and like, you know, Zulu nation was big in New York at that time. My brother was in Zulu. I was just a kid that just really wanted to be part of that, you know, that whole wave of what was going on. So when I came to Chicago, it kind of was like everything kind of came to a screeching halt because that wasn't what was going on in Chicago in 82 when I came back to Chicago, 1982. Yeah. It was gangbanging and shit. It was like, yeah, it was a gangbanging culture in Chicago at that time. It was a whole different, you know, graffiti was gang graffiti. It wasn't the same type of graffiti. You know, so it was, it was, it was like a culture shock for me. So I kind of just became a recluse and just started bombing my neighborhood, like tagging up in the neighborhood I lived in and just kind of was to myself. And then I eventually met people who knew about hip hop. And yeah, that's, that's kind of my, my beginning of my, you know, my experience being in Chicago. I was kind of like a recluse at first. And then B Street came out and when, like I could say like, I remember when B Street, that movie B Street came out, that really changed a lot of things for me too, because everybody got exposed at the same time, as opposed to people who might have seen the Star Wars documentary on Channel 11 mm -hmm. and they knew about graffiti. So like I met those dudes in Chicago and then like it was like little pockets of people who knew about graffiti. But when Beach Street came out, everybody knew about graffiti, even though it was like a commercial kind of whitewashed version of what graffiti was. I thought that that movie was kind of horrible, actually, when it came out, even when it came out, like now it has a a cultural value, but like spit, I'm like, you know, this the whole, like whoever wrote that. But anyway, like not to get off the point, oh, yeah. um, that changed a lot of, everybody was breaking, man. Everybody overnight wanted to break dance. You feel me? Yeah. Like I remember that, you know? So yeah, so I saw, I, I watched the whole thing. I watched, I kind of watched it grow. And um, I was kind of at the forefront in a lot of ways because I was already doing it. Like I was already yeah, I was doing everything. I mean, we didn't do one thing. I did everything. I, I, only thing I didn't do was DJ. Like I was an MC. Mm -hmm. I was rapping already when I was in New York. I was already tagging. I was already, you know, doing graffiti and MCing and yeah. So like, I just brought that. I brought that to Chicago. Like I, I, I continued that, man. Did you ever dabble in DJing at any point? Nah, I never really. You know, because I, I got so much respect for like if if I don't have like. I didn't have the, 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 the means to really become a DJ. I didn't have the equipment and I never really pursued that. So yeah. I have a, I have a good sense of, of music, but I don't, but yeah, I've never really, you know, I, because if I'm going to do something, I'm going to, I'm going to go hundred percent. So I never really, you know, I just, I let 
uh, you know, I, I just let somebody else do that. And I just yeah. stuck to emceeing. Yeah, so profound or IO, yeah. do you have any uh, follow up questions about the early days of Chicago hip hop? Yeah, I, one of the questions that I wanted to know was how did you and Parker lead me? Like, I don't think I, I think I know the story, but I don't really know. Cause I know, I, I know I Big lived, Brother. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Big Bro. Yeah, yeah, I, I lived I lived on the north side. Um, Parker was, uh, he he was introduced to me by by a mutual person. Like I, like I was, like I had mentioned, like there was a few people in my neighborhood. I lived on, I lived on, I lived on Bryn Mawr. I lived in, uh, that's considered Edgewater, Rogers Park kind of area, uptown, yeah. north side, right? So um, there was a few cats that lived in my neighborhood who saw Star Wars. There was one person in my building who was from New Rochelle, which is up, you know, up, yeah, up yeah. Like, upstate New York, like past the Bronx. So he was like an East Coast cat. So me and him, we clicked. And then I met some other dudes who knew about graffiti because they saw the Star Wars documentary, right? Yeah. So they and then and then I, I think they might even seen Wild Style. So I met these guys, and so they introduced me to Parker later. But the funny thing was, I met Parker before I was introduced to him. I met him because he came on my block and he was at a game room playing a video game, and I saw his his gear. He had on like Lee's, and he had like a a bomber jacket with a name belt. Like you know, he just looked like b boy down like. So I, I knew he was, I knew he wasn't from Chicago. This was like maybe 80, maybe 84, 83, 84, something like that. And he kind of dissed me because I was, I remember I was short. I was shorter than him. I hadn't gotten my growth spurt, right? So I was like a shorty to him. So he kind of brushed me off. Like, I was like, yo, you from New York? You know, he was like, yeah, get out. I'm playing the video game. Like, who are you? You know what I'm saying? So like, after I could tell, like, he was kind of playing me, I just kind of fell back. And I didn't really like, I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want him to think I was sweating him, but I, I knew he was from New York. So I, I didn't say nothing. And then we never, I never saw, I never met him like officially that time, but I remembered him. But then like a year later, the next summer, somebody was like, yo, this this guy from New York. You should meet this guy. And it was the same person. Wow. So when we met the second time, it was like, we just clicked. Like it was this immediate, like, you know, we was, that was it. We've that we, we've been, we've been a crew since we, we, we yeah. formed the crew. The crew we formed was, was called TCP, the crowd pleasers. Okay. So that was the crew. That was like one of the first crews on the <laughs> North side. So we, we, we became the crowd pleasers. It was me, him. And then we picked up another guy, but yeah, that's how I met Pete. Pete was already tagging. He was already tagging and doing like, he did the same thing I did. He came to Chicago and I guess he, just started bombing, tagging. He was tagging at the hidden buses. So he right. was like the bus king. Wow. You know, and I was just tagging in my neighborhood. And um, we just ended up eventually, I, you know, I guess it was ine inevitable we would meet, but we were introduced by uh, this one brother named uh, B Red. B Red introduced us, if I don't, if I, if I remember right. Wow. Mm. Yeah, Parker Lee. So that's, that's, that's my partner. That's my product, you know, production partner. That's my DJ. Yeah, that's Parker. I used yeah. to be my partner in crime. Like we, you know, we was we was tagging, man. We was like bombing the city, man. We was right. like going crazy and like in the early 80s, we was one of the first crews to really like break Chicago in with graffiti. Like they wasn't, yeah, they wasn't really ready for us back then, man. We 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 created like a lot of the reason why you have to have a license and like, to be a, like a contractor's license and you can't just buy spray paint over the counter is really because of what we did back in the eighties, man. Mm. Uh, I'm not oh, wow. necessarily <laughs> proud of that, but like that, that's just facts, man. Like we was going crazy. We was like, yeah, it was, it was crazy. You know that's, what what I mean? that's a good one. Hey, Ock, do you remember, man, you and I working together in food service in the hospital, man? I do. Man, that's when I, I first met you, brother. And uh, I had heard about you then and didn't know that you were the Akbar that everybody was talking about on the mic. And you remember brother Emmett and brother Eddie Nero. It was like, yeah, yeah man, yeah, this brother, man, you got to hear this brother. And then I think when I first got there, you weren't, I think something, you weren't there that much longer after I got there and I ended up staying there over 10 years. But then I bumped into you again. I started bumping into you again on the scene. And one of the things I thought was unique was that like as me and Ayo talked about before, when I started first coming around, you was already established yeah. and you've never turned me away, brother. Like you was always, always welcoming to me, man. And you were one of the only MCs out of everybody that I'm cool with 
um, especially from the crib, that has never, you've always been the same from the time I met you, even before I knew that you rhymed. You was the same brother and you the same brother today. So uh, 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 an extension of Io giving you your roses, I'm going to give you some too, just because of that. You know what I'm saying? And it's always, I was, I was super excited when we was able to get you on because it's like this brother needs to be on Absolutely. because, man, I feel like, you know, you, you got something that everybody needs to hear still. You know what I mean? You one of them brothers and I feel like what you're doing is important and that's why we trying to preserve it and keep it alive so i give you your props b yeah, yeah i mean uh, we we definitely um have a unique um you know history also because i think it was because of the we we worked together but then emmett emmett uh He's the person who told me about you. I remember like, he was like, yo, you gotta, you gotta like check this young brother out, man. He's, he's nice. He's nasty. Like, you know, y'all need to link up. And, and we did, you know, we eventually did, man. It happened. Um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, I feel like I'm just kind of talking to family and, and, you know, we, 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 we share in the love amongst each other, man. And it's, 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 it's empowering, but uh, like, I need to like, put this music out to the world, man. And every time yeah. I come out, it's like, I have to reintroduce myself. So I approach this as if I'm just starting out because, mm. you know, I have to assume people don't know who I am, man. Wow. I have a history, I have a track record. I've had albums, I've had record deals, I've been on magazines and, but that doesn't mean that I'm necessarily popular in, in, everybody, in everyone's eyes. And there's a whole new wave of MCs. And now, now with so many MCs that you can't count them. I remember when right. it wasn't like that, yeah. right. you know what I mean? So like, it's a whole new, you know what I'm saying? Or a world, you know what I mean? So like, I'm aware of that. So that goes back to me just appreciating any platform I'm invited to, but like, I'm really just putting new music together right now because I feel like I need to just catch up and, you know, get, uh, people reacquainted with what I can bring to the table. Cause yeah, man, I mean, I've been doing this for, like I'm in too deep, you know, I mean, yeah, I'm, a, yeah. I'm, a music, I'm an artist and I, I have to just stay true to that and give the people really what they want, man. Cause people, people been waiting, man. Like, yo, what's good, Ock, man? When you, you know, yeah. drop the album, like what's up, you know? So those, you know, those are reminders that, yeah, man, it's, yeah, you know, it's time, man. Yes, I, I've been I've been cooking, man. I mean, you see where yeah, I'm at. So we, 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 we got we got it on a slow summer, man. It's about to be ready. Hey, right. that's I'm, still... I'm always working, though, man. I, I never like one thing I, I did over the years over all the, 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 the different deals I've had. I've gone through. We could talk about the industry and how not to get played and how, you know, who not to trust and all that, like how the, the, the ups and downs in the industry and all that. But like. To this day, like I, I'm still committed to to put music out, man. So, yeah. we 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 gonna we gonna be uh pleasantly okay, surprising man. people this year with new with new stuff, new projects, new videos. But uh, but even over through all of that, I've still been consistent. I always try to drop, not try, but I've been dropping gems here and there. You see me like I, I went to New York. I I got with Fred. We you know we was making our noise out there. I got on the on the uh rappers out of control show a few times i was on the last show when they had the halftime show with you know dj eclipse so like i'm still making sure that that people remember okay this guy oh yeah that guy like mm -hmm. you know so like yeah. i don't want people to just totally forget so but I, I i gotta drop some albums i gotta you know i gotta like i gotta you know this is it's, it's 2021 man you like you know you gotta keep reminding people yeah you know it's sure, short term sure. memory so you gotta just you gotta be in you gotta be on it so yeah, man, I, you know, I got my work cut out, man. So if someone's tuning in tonight and they don't know Akbar, they don't know your past, your history, what would you say right. to them? Like what, what sets you apart, you know, from other artists that are out? Uh, probably everything about my content. Um, mm. Probably my content sets me apart because uh, I probably don't talk about what most people talk about or maybe um, but I, I would, I would probably say lyrically, I, I'm, I'm set apart lyrically from people, but I mean, style wise, I just, I just come with the, with, with, you know, that East coast, I won't say all oh, it's, it's hundred percent East coast, but it's definitely East coast because that's kind of like my foundation. Um, but I think what sets me apart is just everything that I've, my, I'm, I'm like a sum of all of, you know, my experiences and, and, and wealth of whatever information 
I try to uh, incorporate into, you know, my music. Uh, I think that's what sets me apart, man. I think it's just yeah. my, I think lyrically, I'm set, I think I, I'm set apart from people lyrically. Lyrically, I, that's mm -hmm. what sets me apart. Yeah, I, not my I voice. People say my voice, I have a good voice, but I yeah. think it's, I think lyrically I'm set apart from other, other rappers. Yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, I think, you know, lyrically the, the content, the things that you rap about, you have such depth, you know, in your music. And there was a couple of songs I wanted to ask you about um, from your album, Planet X. You had a song on there called Still Dedicated. And I love, I love the, the lyrical content on that song and how, it so I wanted to ask you about that. So in the song, you, you paint a picture of how you're trying to make it in this world. And then you have a friend that's trying to make it and you pick two different paths to make it. And just wanted to know, like, I, I assume that's based on a true story, but just wanted to know if you could just give a little backstory on, on that song. Wow, that's crazy. You, you <laughs> that's crazy. First of all, I, I didn't, I don't know. That's crazy that you even know that song, but that's cool. You, you it's a dope song, that. man. That's, it's a super dope that, song. That song is, that song is, um, it's, it is, it is based on like a, a lot of different true stories kind of lumped together. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, it's kind of, uh, anybody's, it could be anybody's story who, yeah. who has the same experience of just growing up and trying to find a, a positive route that's going to lead to something good and then choosing, you know, to go that route, even though it's tougher than the easy route, which is, you know, sometimes going to lead to your, you know, early demise. So yeah, seeing that, living that and experiencing like just losing people who you grew up with, man, because they chose, a, you know, a fast life or, you know, money and, you know, drug dealing and whatever, whatever, whatever the situation, gangs, whatever, whatever. Yeah. You know, the, yeah. So that, that, that song definitely, um, I like that song, man, a lot, man. Um, it was just inspired by, by a few, a few friends who I lost. Uh, there mm -hmm. are a lot of them to be honest with you, but I, a few in particular, um, that I lost, man. So still dedicated to just saying that, you know, I haven't forgotten any of them because yeah. I do think about, I think about friends who I've lost, man. Yeah. Yeah, I just thought how you presented that those stories were so dope because you know there's there's plenty of stories about people having a hard time or, or you know selling drugs or what, what have you, but the way that you made like the way that you presented the stories, you you feel you feel for the humans in the stories, you you humanize the stories, which you know is not not always easy to do. So I really appreciated that. And the the other song on there I wanted to ask you about. And it's the song, I'm, I'm gonna have to play a little snippet so you can see how wild these guys go when they hear this song. Hold on one second. These guys go nuts, here we go. Oh, there it is, yes. <laughs> Pro yo, 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 yo. Oh, this hey, song yo. is so hey, dope. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. All right, okay, 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 okay. All right, um, that song. Man, first of all, did you make that beat? Who made that beat? Healy Parker. That's, oh, he, a, he. that's a that's a that's one loop going the whole yeah, what three or some minutes. That's that's a, actually uh I don't want to tell who the, I don't gotta say who the loop yeah. is from. But yeah, that's that's just a Peely loop. Man. Um I man, that, that song is it's funny, but that song just kind of caught fire, man. Um I like I like the beat. I mean, you know, I was actually thinking about the the the, the previous song you was playing, still dedicated, was mm -hmm. talking about that song. It's really the beat, man. It's the beat. Like that beat is what brought that. I was able to use that as a vehicle to, to, you know, put those emotions into the track. Yeah. Cause it was a, like when, when I, when I do choose to write about something that's really like personal, I want to like give it up like for real. So like that, that, that beat allowed me to do it. This beat right here though, <laughs> this is hype, man. Like crazy. Yeah. Like, so, um, yeah, man, the song, like the lyrics, um, I just was like, yo, let me talk about, how to eat right like you know yeah it's, it's been, funny though because i think mm -hmm. if I, I think if i had that beat like if someone sent that beat to me to do a song to i don't think i would have ever thought to do a song <laughs> about the content that you did and if you told me that you're going to do a song about that content i might be like oh, i don't know if that's going to work but man that works like the way <laughs> on there Kill it just you works be, so you know dope. what Nah, nah, it makes sense though. You know why? Because if you listen, when I well, when I listen to the beat, that da 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 da, I, I heard that in my head, the da 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 da. Because that yes. that bass line that is so driving. It's like yeah. it's ragged. It's like it reminds, it's dance hall kind of to me. Right. So like, I'm on some ital business. Like I'm talking about <laughs> eating healthy, like ital, yeah. like straight. 
you know, man, I mean, yeah, I'm, you know, just yeah. green, like, you know, man, you know, so like it made sense. Like I'm going to talk about how the Rasta band or how the, you know, the real, uh, you know, natural diet applies to us. Like we need to eat back. We need to go back to nature. So like, yeah, that, that, that be, it made sense to me because it's like, it's, it's kind of dance hall. So it's like, I could, you know, I could just go off that. Then you heard, you heard how that's how I came on it. I yeah. came like that. Yeah. Yeah, so like, yeah, but the beat, man, it's just, it was just the beat, man, for me. Like, it's, a, it's just like a feel good beat, like yeah, a feel yeah. good. So, yeah, so, you know, so it's, you, when you talk about food, like that, it could be, that's like a, a good, that's a feel good topic, like, you know, yeah, eating. For real. Yeah, you can't so. listen to that song and then not want to eat right. Like, I'm mad. Yeah, really. Yeah, <laughs> no, it was, it was, it was, a, it was a good song, man. People, it's definitely I, a good song. I, 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 um, I got invited to the wake up show based on that song. I guess, oh, really? uh, DJ Tech, uh, you know, Swain Tech, yeah, Tech reached out to me. Sent, he was like tweeting, like trying to find me, like, yo, where's Akbar? Like, they've been playing. I guess he heard the song. So he got it some kind of way. He heard it and he, he wanted to get me on the show. And uh, so we finally, he finally got in touch with me, whatever. So I got on the show and uh, I wasn't physically on the show. I, I would have loved to have actually been yeah. physically on the wake up show with Sway and Tech, but, but I did get a phone interview. I was in Chicago. This was probably 2000 and what 2012 mm. somewhere mm. around there it, it was it was it was it was it was a minute ago but um it was like yeah it was right around the time when i when the album came out because album that i dropped planet x in 2012 so it was like 2012 2013 mm. but he he got me on the show man and, he, and for the he said for the first time he played when he played my song he played good food he played it twice in a row and he said he wow. had never done that before on a wake-up show so that wow. i know that time Dope. when he got me on the show we you know, we 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 chopped it up or whatever, and he played my joint twice. Be like, you know, big up and rewind and drop it against. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like he did that for me on the wake up show. So I thought that was love, like that he even did that. He's like, yo, I never did this before. We are gonna play this joint again. Wow. Yeah, so, that, that's, wish my, you, that's my joint though, man. That, I like I, I like good food. I like I, that song. I wish you knew, like I used that song with two things. When I do shows, I always pay homage to you. You know, saying for like, like how you like how I looked up to you to be an MC, and I always like open my shows up paying homage to you by doing that song. But now, since I'm an educator and I talk to students, every time health, the conversation around health comes up, I always play that video, and I wish you could hear the conversations that come after that with young people who hear that, they're like, man, who is this dude? Why he not yeah. on the radio? Why he not up there with like Jay-Z and Bob? You know what I'm saying? Like they really like resonate with it. You know what I'm saying? So I, I definitely use that like as a curriculum and like a starting, like a starting, uh, like a conversation starter for students when we talk about health and how to, you know, eat right and, and, and get yourself together. So I appreciate that, man. That's what's up. I for appreciate real. that. I appreciate you for sharing the music like that. That's that's funny that that you that you would say that. I I was actually when I was in New York, man. Um, I got invited to uh to teach youth also. So yeah. it was like an honor. Like I was, I was like really like. So I was uh able to meet with with uh I did a few I did a few uh workshops and actually I called it a good food. I had to come up with something uh to present, you know, and it would music and like something to like to you know go away with so like yeah I, I came up with a good it was called the good food workshop and, nice um, yeah it was dope man. it was dope I, I'm, I'm forgetting he's my nephew's reminding me to hold the mic <laughs> to hold the mic to me <laughs> i need i need one of them i need one of them joints like that right right <laughs> 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 yeah, um, I was I was happy to, to to actually have been able to do the same thing. I, I was able to share some music with with a like they were like maybe high school age. We did like a we did a, a lyric workshop, and right. we also did like a workshop where we just talked about food and talked yeah. about like eating healthy and not just food like physical food that you put in your mouth. But I was telling them that everything that you take in is food. So think Absolutely. of the music you listen to as food. Yeah. You know, think of what you allow your eyes to see and believe is food and, you know, what you, you know, so all those orifices that you have, those are all where things can be in, enter into your system, into your, your, you know, your being. And so you got to like have those, you know, those guards up to like not let everything in. So like the mouth is just the biggest, you know, yeah. 
trap, you know what I mean? But like, you got to watch what you hear and listen to and what you see and all that, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I was like teaching them. So when I was had the good food workshop, it wasn't just about food. It was about understanding, you know, all the different ways that you need to like be aware of, of you know, of what you what you take in. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah that's, that, was, that was cool. Yeah, I really like that. And my, my sister has been on that type of uh, vibe for a long time. And she became uh, started living a vegan lifestyle years ago and has kind of influenced uh, family members and friends and stuff like that. So now my wife and I are on that. And she so when I played the song for her. She immediately asked, oh, are you going to ask him if he's vegan? Ask him if he's vegan. She's like a pro vegan. So just curious to know, is that a lifestyle that you try to live or, or uh, practice? Yeah, I mean, I... I I won't even say that I'm a starch any, like I'm like a staunch, well, I'm, not, I'm not even sure if I'm saying the word right, but I'm not like <laughs> a rigid follower of any one. So like I may, you may catch me, I may actually eat, I may be eating some salmon one day, but I 99% of the time I am, I, I would say maybe I'm a vegan 99% of the time, but, but not, I, I'm flexible, you know what I mean? So yeah. like, I don't eat any red meat though. I don't eat chicken. I haven't probably eaten chicken or red meat since 80, three or 80 no not that long ago 80 i think i stopped eating red meat and i became a vegetarian in 80 it was like 85 okay 1985 right around that time i remember i saw the movie faces of death mm. i remember like mm. I, I i wow i read that movie the, the not i read the book the jungle i was in this is when i was in high school so those those experiences kind of led me on a path of becoming a vegetarian like reading the jungle which was about the stockyards right the you know the meat industry in Chicago, which yeah. is like horrible, and like what yeah. what the meat, how the meat processing is, how that whole thing, and yeah. how unsanitary it is, and it was, and uh, Faces of Death was showing you how the animals die, and then mm. just reading how to eat to live as being in the Nation of Islam, yeah, growing up in a Muslim that's family, that's like that's all those kind of different experiences, kind of put me on a path of becoming a vegetarian without really realizing it. And then I, it's funny because I didn't know that I was a vegetarian when, we were, when I was a baby. Like my mom told me, oh, when we were, when you were babies, like we were all vegetarians when we were at one point, hmm. when I was a baby, you know, when, we were, when I was a kid and then we started eating meat later. I don't remember that, but like maybe genetically I remembered it. I don't know, but, or subconsciously I should say I remembered it. But I, but I, 80, yeah, uh, cool. being a vegetarian is, is probably more popular now than it was when I first began. 85 like big you know mcdonald's was like running it man so the, the mcdlt was out and <laughs> you know what i mean like you had like i had a lot of peer pressure back then to to remain like but i'm not like very that i'm not a i'm not like a one of those like you know vegan nazis like i'm i'm not that strict about it but but yeah. I, I i do take care i try to take care of what i what i eat man I try to watch what i eat yeah yeah Be before we leave the good food uh, Neville had one uh, question about that. Neville, you want to chime in? Yeah, man. Good night, Akbar. It's Neville here. Salute. Peace. Um, Salute, peace. Huh? I just wanted to know, I don't know why, but I wanted to know where that was filmed, the um, the video, and what restaurant is that? The restaurant looked very familiar to me. Oh, okay. We were talking about good food. Yes. Yeah. That was, I was in New York when we, when we shot that video, and... Um, I filmed a lot of it was in the studio, which is in the Bronx. It was uh, at TME Studios. Fred is from Fred is from the Bronx, but I met Fred in Chicago. He was a writer that was on the scene in the 90s in Chicago. So when I went back to New York, I was working with him and we decided to shoot the video. So it was shot at his in his studio. You see some of the scenes where I'm in the studio, I'm in the booth. And then the restaurant scene that she was talking about, that was at a place called Hunts Point in the Bronx. It's like a community center in the Bronx and they have a little little kitchen like a little cafe that we use for that, for the video. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's Hunts Point. Really yeah, Hunts Point. Thanks, I remember that. The vegan, the, um, the vegetarian spot, I was like, I was like, yeah, I it's didn't at, it's at the, It's called <laughs> The Point, yeah, it's at The Point. Yeah, for some yeah. reason I thought it was Brooklyn, but I remember going there when you were in the back oh, section ordering things. So like, I've been is that there why I look familiar? Yes, yes. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they to that. Yeah, they, they I didn't know it was the Bronx though. I thought it was in Brooklyn. I had gone to it and I was like, wow, I was like, I remember that place. I'm like, no way it looked like that place. That place stood out to me. So shout out to, now, now I was like, I'm saying to myself, this can't be Chicago. This gotta be New York. But thanks yeah, a lot. Yeah, no, that that's um, exactly that's that I guess that's that's where you recognize it from. It's definitely um a real cafe at the at the at the point. They Fred and um the whole that that whole crew that I that I I I'm I, I, 
those are my guys, man. Um, they they do what they, they used to do. It was called the Art of Lyrics, but they did it like once a month in the Bronx, and they did an open mic thing at the the point. That's where we shot the video, so they had access to that. It's like a, it's a community center. It's, in, it's like South Bronx. Um, yeah, Hunts yeah, Point those, those is live. People, yeah, <laughs> live area, people. Hunts Point back in the day. Remember? Yeah, those are my people. Hunts Point is where it was. How long yeah. ago did that song come out, roughly, or the vid and video? That song is that that song is older than the album because. I actually wrote that song a little bit after the Big Bang Boogie album, mm. which was I wrote I, Big Bang Boogie came out in 2001. That was my first. That was like the debut album that I, I dropped. Right. And I remember I wrote Good Food probably in 2004 or 2005. I wrote the lyrics to it, but I never really had a beat that I really I didn't know where to put it. You know what I mean? So eventually me, Parker, and third rail dj third rail from chicago mm, we we yeah. got together and, we, and i recorded good food to i found a beat that that's when he came with the with that the beat that it became the song that you hear now parker played me that loop and then when i got when i got that loop i was like okay let's record and so we yeah. recorded and we put out white labels and that was in that was probably 2006 or somewhere around there we put that out in 20 like 2006 on a white label, we put that out with a few other songs. And then because I felt like nobody heard Good Food and it was such a good song that when I put the Planet X album together, I put that on the on the Planet X album. Nice, nice. So that, that nice. song is kind of older than it. It's older than the yeah. album that it appears on. So, but so yeah, but I, I, I knew the song deserved some, you know, some light. So I'm glad I, I was able to, to, you know, to, to get it out there, man, you know? Yeah, for sure. Io, were you gonna jump in with something? Yeah, uh, I just wanted to know, like, um, are you? Is your roots? Are you, do you have West Indian roots? Yeah. Um, how, how'd you know? I just, I don't know. I just put two and two together so because I like to like. <laughs> well, I mean, hip, hip hop has hip hop has West Indian roots. Yeah, itself, absolutely, yeah. all day. But, but yeah, but those who know know. But but I do have. I mean, my my dad's dad, like my my grandfather's from. It's from Kingston, so I do have oh, West okay. Indian roots too. But oh, I've never, okay. never been to Jamaica. I grew up in New York and Chicago, and I guess knowing that I have West Indian roots always, because I knew that my grandfather was from Jamaica. I knew that when I was like my dad told me. I never met my grandfather, but one day I would love to go to Jamaica and maybe find yeah. distant, you know, relatives yeah. that I have. But knowing that, I guess I always kind of was had an affinity <laughs> towards the culture, yeah. uh, the Jamaican culture, and so. Um, but and then it's, it's the music itself, like, and because hip hop has a reggae foundation, because you yeah. know DJs, you know, I don't want to get off course, but like the word DJ, like that was really the original MC who was the DJ, you know, like, mm -hmm. right. you know what I mean, so like DJ Yellow Man, and like they was all ca called DJs, you know, Ninja Man, and they was all DJs, you know. When I was a little stereo, I listened to some yeah. champion. But it, was, mm -hmm. it was all DJs, like they call themselves DJs, but. Yeah, we don't want to. We don't have to go deep into that that history. Hey, but, but, but yeah, just but shout I, but, out to R.I.P. to Daddy but, Uroy. Daddy Uroy yeah, passed exactly. away today. Yeah, yeah. So, so I recognize that 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 element of it too, man. But but yeah, but my people are from from Jamaica, bro. I, I would love to. I mean, that's actually on my bucket list, man. I plan to go to Jamaica. That's yeah. on my bucket list. That's All that's right. that's facts. That's what's up. That's what's up. And so basically, the reason why I asked is like I remember the song you did with Super Cat. You know what I mean? I remember the buzz that that wait, got who? in Chicago. You did it. Wait, hold on. Super you do cat. like a? Didn't you do like a remix, or some type well, I, of remix or something that they played on Power ninety six or, or one hundred six jams or something nah, on the radio? Nah, nah. That wasn't nah, you. I don't think so. I, I know. I mean, I know. Jam I know Jamal oh, is probably the closest I got. Jam to, that's to what like, I'm. That's the one I'm, I'm talking know, about. Okay, Jamalski. yeah, Jamalski. Yeah, I was gonna say you did with Jamalski. Jamalski was, I'm sorry, pardon self. Yeah, the one <laughs> nah, you did with cool Jamalski. Jamalski. Now Jamalski worked with all those all those guys, man. Jamalski's yeah. worked with Supercat and but now nah, yeah. Jamalski was uh. That's how I ended up on his album. That's where Akbar's groove kind of got. Right, it's, right, that's right. That's how that happened. That's how that uh, that song even came about. Was right. I jumped on his album? Yeah, Jamalski was down with Boogie Down Productions. Yes, yes, um, yes. I met him through Parker because Parker saw him in the magazine. He was in the Source or whatever. I forget what magazine exactly, but Parker was like, "Yo, that's my people's." Like I grew up in you know in Manhattan with him. Like I'm gonna go find him. I'm gonna go to New wow. York and I'm gonna look him up. You know, that's my man. So he went back and he found him. And at that time, he had just got to deal with Columbia. 
So Jamalski was first with BDP and then BDP, of course, you know the history, they broke up. Right. You know, KRS kind of went solo, but there was a time when he was like, when he was doing like Black Jesus and like yep. that whole, uh, yep. I think it was the edutainment. Yeah, era. the edutainment. He was part yep. of that. Yep. Jamalski was part of that. He was doing shows with, with Chris. So yeah. off of that, he got a deal with Columbia Records and off of my man Park, off of, you know, Park and knowing Jamalski, that's kind of the, that was mm -hmm. the connection. So I, I met Jamalski through Parker. We hung out at Sony Records. He was recording his album. This was at the same time Nas was getting signed to oh, a record wow. deal. Like they had the same A and R, so like I was hanging out with Nas's A and R. Curious George had just got signed. The Fugees uh, had just got signed. So this A and R had she had signed all these different artists. She signed Jamalski. Um, so yeah, I got on his album just hanging out the studio with him, and I just one day got in the booth, and I just was like, I just went, you know, blacked out and did like a whole two or three minute just rhyming with no no hook, and they. Yeah. You know, they kind of like edited it down, and that's yeah, that's what you got. That's mm. dope. That was, that's that dope. Boy was classy. Man. <laughs> so man. we have a we have a question uh, from our Facebook feed from uh, he. Oh, there's people out there listening. People, yeah. People but how right Howard now? Howard Kager or Cager? He says he's a. Uh, that's my that's my man's yo. He said yeah. He said <laughs> he's your self proclaimed chef. He is. He is. <laughs> hey, but he that's he wanted my brother. He, he was asking. Uh, he gets busy, man. He gets busy, yo. What? <laughs> he was asking about if you're still in Chicago. I am. I am. Yeah, holla at me, bro. I'm. I'm. I'm in Chicago. Yeah. Cool, cool. I'm in High cool. Park, man. I'm out south. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. Right on. Man, yes, sir. Before we Bullified, talk about, he got the Bullified uh, barbecue. So I'm gonna give you a free plug, brother. Cause that's my man's. <laughs> yeah, go he, ahead. He, he doing his thing. Is there not? He. I'm just saying he got the Bullified barbecue sauce and. The, the brother goes crazy in the kitchen. So, uh, you know, I'm in the kitchen cooking up the rhymes and the, the hot bars, and he he in the kitchen cooking up something, <laughs> something that, you know, you, you want to eat, you know what I mean? So, yeah, man, I'm glad you're tuning in, man. We just we just chopping it up, man, you know? Yeah, no doubt. Um, before we jump into, you know, anything new, uh, yeah. I know you mentioned you had some new music going on, but is there anything you want people to know um, about the Planet X album or the Big Bang Boogie album, you know, folks that may not know about these albums, or is there anything that you want folks to know about these albums? Mm, I mean, if you haven't heard any of my music, maybe that's those are two good introductions to my music. But I'm always so ahead of myself, so like mm. I just would like people to just look for new stuff too, man. Yeah. But if you know, if you don't necessarily rock with the what what I already put forth, you know, just Stick around, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. So I can tell you. <laughs> but but I, I did I do have two like albums, then some people really, you know, uh big up the first one. Like it has a kind of a, a classic hip hop status now, like classic yeah. underground hip hop status. The the Big Bang Boogie album does, like because yeah. it's part of that that era, that nineties era, and it was, I was yeah. part of that. So the album is part of history. So yeah, listen to the Big Bang Boogie album, understand that it was, you know. A different time, man, when hip hop was, you know, doing it was a different sound, you know what I mean? But it was a good still hip good music is timeless. So like if you exactly. like good music, right. you'll I think you'll I think you'll enjoy something on my on either one of my albums. I did the, the Planet X album just out of perseverance and wanting to continue to put music out. So like yeah. that kind of was like a self effort to put together that album it took a lot of it took eleven years for me to get out but um yeah we got the planet x album too you listen to either one of the albums yeah it I, I have to tell you every time i try to spark a lot of conversations on social media and every time i'll ask a question around like what's a song that you know defines hip-hop or what's a song that like when you think of hip-hop you think of this song and your song on that album B big bang boogie hip-hop is often yes. gets posted uh oh, on yeah. that that question and it's such a dope <laughs> song dope album yeah. too so yeah, yeah so I like I, that song, man. Yeah, if you haven't like heard, if you're song. listening in uh, right now, if you've not heard it, go check it out. It's called Big Bang Boogie uh, yeah. by Akbar yeah. and it's super dope. Hip hop is that's yeah. that's a good one, man. That's, yeah, that's it a is. good song, man. Yeah, you, man. Hey, Ox, since since we on that topic, man, a, a question comes to mind. Uh, what's your take on on uh, hip hop today? And uh, yeah, what you know the, the I was the, just listening to. Uh, King Von on the way here, man. Rest yeah, like King Von. Yeah, I just was wondering, man. Like, I, you know, 
I know we we got the mumble rap issue, with, you know, and things like that, man. Yeah. And I'm not I'm not I'm not trying to start anything like that. I just want to know what your right, take we're is. Not gonna, on the we're music not going to start. We're not going to start nothing. But I mean, <laughs> it is what it is. I mean, to each his own, and everybody can get you know can eat, and everybody can find their their niche or whatever you want to call it. But I'm over here doing my thing, man. I love. Right. I love good music, man. Um, I don't really like to categorize people, so like, I I, I kind of don't like to like put people in a box because I don't want people to do that with because people do that with my music. Oh, you like, yeah. you know, I'm a conscious or whatever like type of row. Mm-hmm. I'm this type of rapper. When really, like, I don't really see myself being able to be shaped into one, you know, thing because if the if the it, whatever I may feel is gonna come out and or whatever the music kind of brings out of me like that's kind of what my dictator so like yeah man i mean i like i like a lot of different music i don't there's a lot that i don't like though um i do i do i do have to say that the music has taken a big decline like uh the culture mm-hmm. culturally like just creatively it has definitely yeah. uh been dumbed down a lot man i mean but and that's that's anybody and anybody who says that that's not true is is obviously either in denial or, or not being honest Absolutely. about that part but I mean, you know, we still making music, man. I mean, there's still good music to to be found. A lot of good music, actually. Um, and the thing is, like, I I'm I'm not the best person to ask about like how I feel about the music right now, because I'm being an MC. I really never really listened to a lot of music anyway. I'm just being honest, like, and I think a lot of artists can relate to that. Like, when you're an artist yourself, you don't really like to listen to other artists a lot. Absolutely. So, like, I kind of always insulated myself. Mm-hmm. from a lot of different music just so I can kind of just stay in my own bubble and creatively like not get too influenced but I do but I am able like I do try to pop out and listen to what's on the radio or what people are doing what's hot um and now it's like with the internet you can't get away from music like you yeah. know now it's like the Cardi B era and the the whatever like you know we went from Nicki Minaj to Cardi B to you know, I don't know who it is. Who is now the City Girls or whoever the, I don't know what they're talking about now. <laughs> who, who is it? Now? They got Meg the Stallion like it's just you know, it's so crazy now, like I'm up on everybody. Like I, I stay, you know, I stay up on what's 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 so called hot right now. But there's so many lanes that you could that you could fill, man. I mean, you still got like guys like, you know, uh, you know, Rock Marciano and you got Griselda mm-hmm. and like these other guys who they are everybody's able to eat and do their own style of what's considered hip hop or whatever, yeah. however you want to call it, man. So yeah, you know, mumble rap is here, you got other people over here and got, you know. Everybody's doing their thing, man. I guess, man. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I'm just ready to make some some bangers, man. Like, I people ain't gonna be able to say I'm a mumble rapper because I've right. never I've never mumbled. Like, I'm very <laughs> articulate, man. Like, I like to spit. Like, I'm a spitter, but I ain't gonna yeah. mumble. But I, I ain't, you know, I ain't gonna knock. If somebody sounds, if you sound good, you sound good. You know, I guess. Yeah. But that's 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 interesting that you don't see yourself as a conscious MC because I always. View, not to put you in the box, but I always viewed you as somebody who's just teaching. You know what I mean? Like I, I look at you as a teacher. You know what I'm saying? Uh, like even in the interlude on the Big Bang Theory, when you was talking about breathing and the importance of when you was basically giving me a le- as a young dude starting out emceeing, mm-hmm. you was giving me the lessons on breathing techniques. Like you don't you don't breathe from the you breathe from the diaphragm. diaphragm that's yep. how you jam. And mm-hmm. I used to listen to that joint like a million times, man. Yeah. Like <laughs> just yeah, nah. taking that's notes. Real. Like that's how you MC. <sighs> like all that's of those real. points that you gave it was like you was teaching. You know what I'm saying? So I always. No, that's real. Good. That's real. I mean, I, I I'm gonna do that because that's just part of who I am. So yes, yes, um, yes. I appreciate it like when it was given to me, when music was able to give me something more than just, you know, able to dance or, you know, I, yeah. So I, I, I that's a conscious, it's like I, I consciously put, you know, seeds of, you know, information or drop jewels, as they say, I, I always drop a jewel or two, but um, I just want to make good music though at the end of the day, man. Um, oh, I don't want to come across as one thing, but I guess, I mean, I, I accept that. Like people, if people say, hey, you know, Akbar is this type of rapper or who do you compare yourself to? And people say, they'll compare me to like a J Rude, a Damager or like a, I've even, I've been compared to Rakim when I, they mentioned me in the source, like they compare me to Rakim. Now I, I can't be mad at that, no, but I'm not, no, I'm not like one thing though. Like me, myself, when I look at myself, I'm, I don't, I'm not, I, I'm not just one thing. 
I do yeah. every, I do all, t- I got so many styles, bro. Right. And so yeah, I, you know, sure. I, I just want to continue to, to show that, but um, yeah, man, I mean, being a conscious rapper is not the worst label I guess I could have. I'm, yeah. I'm definitely <laughs> hip hop, you know what I mean? Yeah, through and through. Cause I feel Keep- like, and this is the last thing I'm sorry to, no, like, you good. Just, like yeah. me not being to be connected to like a Rock Kim or like a KRS One up close and personal, I felt like you were that the closest to that for us, for me. You know what I mean? Like you were, and I, I said I wasn't gonna say this tonight, but I felt like you were my KRS One or my Rock Kim mm-hmm. that I could that I could ha- that had access to. Because every time I used That's to go real, to the bro. shows at like the I Bob Shop. So or the elbow room, I was taking notes, bro. Like how you hold a mic, how you command the crowd, what was you doing? Like you was always aware of the surroundings, even when you was freestyling, I was taking notes, bro. Like, and then when I, it was my opportunity to rock, I implemented everything that I saw you or GQ or, you know, the other dudes that I look up to, I always implemented that into what I was doing. So yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to put that into the space. Right. Yeah, dope. Yeah, Akbar, can you tell us a little bit about the new music that you've been making? Uh, right now, Parker, who's that's the other half of Mental Giants, he and I are, are working on the album. So that album is probably halfway done, but I would love it. You kind of, you probably kind of sense some of the frustration, but because I would have loved to have the album have been out last year but 2020 was what 2020 was and yeah a lot of things didn't happen the way i would love them to have happened you know sure but, but uh i'm working on that album with parker um that's probably my priority to get that album done because we're probably four or five songs deep into the album so maybe you know put that out hopefully by by the springtime we'll have something to drop man nice um I have a another venture that I'm doing with DNA Beats actually from Chicago. Who <laughs> I know artist. DNA. Yeah, he's a yeah. producer that, and that we. I, he he actually said a lot of good things about you, profound. You, your, your name came up because I told him I had gotten invited to the show. Um, but he and I are, are putting together an EP at some point because I've worked with him in the past. We did a few. He sent me. He was sending me beats. I was in New York, and he reached out to me. Um, just on some love, like, you know, he's like, yo, I got, you know, I got production if you need it. And um, he sent me some stuff that I really liked. So I ended up jumping on a few songs from him, like a few beats. So from that connection that we made, we decided to do an EP. So I'm working on that as well. Um, I've, I'm, I'm here in the studio with, with, with my, my nephew. We got the whole full fledged studio, man. I, nice. We got a walk in booth. We got Pro Tools. So like we're, we're going to be putting a lot of new music out. I'm also going to probably reintroduce a lot of my old stuff from my catalog just for mm. people to be able to get it. Um, people who don't have uh, or not familiar with the like the Big Bang Boogie album that we've been talking about, yep. the Planet X album. There's songs on there that people probably are not familiar with. So we're going to reintroduce those albums. The, those will be available online. Nice. Um, I'm going to just be putting new music out, man. The videos. I, I mean, the last thing I really put out recently was uh, the bombs video. I dropped a video called Bombs, bringing out my best shit. It's a song that I did, so I wanted to put something out. So I dropped that. I dropped the video probably about two months ago now, um, just to, like I said, keep something out there, just to yeah. try to stay consistent. But um, 2021, man, we 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 plan on putting a lot of projects out. So the the, the Planet X album um, was the last one. The next one's going to be the Mental Giants album. That's me and Parker. I guess that would probably be the, the, the next thing to look out for for me. Nice. Yeah. We'll, we'll definitely be looking out for that, for sure, anticipating that. Is there anything outside of, of music that you have going on that you want people to know about? Uh, Apex Inc., Apex Studio, which is where I'm at. Um, this, is, this is my nephew who actually, this, like I said, it's, a, it's like a, a whole umbrella of uh, artists and uh we do visual art. So like, I'm a, I'm a graphic artist as well. So like, I also draw and I do like graffiti and graphic art. So we're going to be doing like clothing. We're going to be doing merch, you know, merchandise is part of music and people uh, want merchandise from the artists. So we got so much talent, bro. Like why not use everything? So we, we got 
clothing line. Apex is the clothing line. Mental Giants is my crew. So like it all comes together. So you'll probably be uh, able to see oh, nice. new music from us new uh, merchandise, Mental Giants merchandise, Apex Inc. merchandise. Um, this brother was part of the John Walt movement, you know what I'm saying? So like, that's part of my lineage. You know, I, for those who know know who John Walt is, he was part of one of the people who started Pivot Gang with Saba, that whole movement in mm -hmm. Chicago. So there's, you know, these are the young cats by, by me, you know, being with my nephew. I'm, that's like my my connection to, to the to that generation, you know what I mean? So. He's really going to be uh, uh, instrumental or has been instrumental in me being able to to like get this stuff together, man, and put put this music out for people this year. Like we're, we're, we're really doing a lot, man. I I mean, you see where I'm at. Like I'm in like a, a virtual <laughs> VR like studio setup. So like we're really busy, man. Like I can't really say everything we're doing because it's sure. a lot. But um, definitely be looking out for like good, like new music, man, like above all. And um merchandise clothing you know what i'm saying fresh yeah. gear um yeah it's, it's it's a lot man it's a lot i mean you, you see you see what's going on right now i mean with just on globally and definitely in this country everybody's realizing that they need to become sovereign and take ownership of their destiny and their their financial situation so we're becoming independent like yeah. i see across the board, people are realizing that that's what's going on right now. Like people can't work the way they have been used to working. People are working right. from home. So people are becoming more independent now. So I guess this is just a part of that too, man. Like we yeah. becoming self-sufficient, which we've always needed to do that anyway. But now it's like the time of where we are as, as, as a nation, like as probably not, I, I would say globally because of what's going on right now, everybody's realizing that like, we got to like become independent and self-sovereign and like, yeah. So I think it's, it's, it's like, it's kind of a sign of the times too, man. Like people are taking charge of their own destiny, man. Like people say, you know, everybody's saying, Hey King, Hey Queen, like you gotta, if you a queen or a King, you have to build your, your, you know, your, 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 you have to, your sovereignty is based on ownership. You know what I mean? So yeah. like you got to own something, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's so that 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 goes right in line with last week. We had Rampage from Flip Mode Squad on, and he Rampage. was schooling us. Yeah. yeah, he was schooling us on that uh, on that very thing of you know What's ownership. That? Ownership, yeah. yeah. Ownership. Yeah, yeah it's all yeah. it's about owning something, man. So in this in this world, you know, we have to own and claim what's ours, man. Yeah, definitely. And what's your uh, what's your nephew's name? That's Aaron. That's AP. Aaron. AP. Well, shout out to AP. Shout um, out to AP. No yeah, doubt. You, 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 he's out. dope, man. He's a dope artist, brother. Dope MC. Yeah, there he is. Yeah. <laughs> dope, uh, dope, What's like, up, man? Graphic artist, producer, engineer. Like he does it all, man. So like I'm mad proud of him. Um, like yeah, I said, sure. his me and his pops, man. You know, that's that's like it's a blessing, you know. Yeah. The way the way the way things happen, man. It's always yeah. it's like always a, the blessings come. When, you know when you don't necessarily always see him ahead of time but yeah but yeah. he's a blessing so that's that's my that's my brother's son right there that's my you know what i mean yeah that's that's, right that's, that's, that's great so we ain't here, that's we great. just building man i mean there's a lot of good things that's that's uh that's in in our near future right now so it's all in it's all within reach man mm -hmm. that's dope i appreciate everybody who 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 who's, who's been uh supportive of the music too oh he wants to, my, my nephew wants to say something to you imas oh yeah for sure Hey, this is a song of yours I grew up on. You was like raised in Inglewood, Chicago, amongst the grits, bro. I'm from Inglewood. Yes, That's sir. like the coldest shit, bro. No, like, for real, like. no doubt, yeah. bro. I appreciate that, bro. <laughs> shit go crazy, bro. Hey, Ayo, you know what song you said? I told you my nephew grew up on like real music, man. Yo, so that's what's up, Joe. That's what saved him, man. Like, yeah, that's yeah. what's up, dude. Um, <laughs> yeah, man, but we 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 working, man. That's all I can really tell you, man. I mean, it's it's just a matter of time before everybody is you know is able to eat and they and people see the fruits, man, that we that we producing over yeah. here. Yeah, well, it's we good. Can't, it's good music, man. Well, we we definitely can't wait to hear it for sure. Um, yeah, I'm about to go, I'm about to go crazy, bro. I've been I've been just kind of just holding back, man. But Ayamash, you know what it is, man. I already yeah. know the pen is sharp. I'm about to go crazy, <laughs> man.
He blessed me on a project I got coming out, man. The pen is still sharp. Bro. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> every like, time I take a loss, man, it's like I just keep coming back stronger. Yeah. Man. I've been taking a lot of losses, man. I just took one wow. today, man. But you know what? Life doesn't deal you anything that you can't handle, man. So mm -hmm. I'm just going to keep loving, man, and keep moving yeah. forward, man. And that's all I'm that's all I have in me. You know what I mean? That's 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 just staying true. And when you stay true, man, nothing but good comes out of that. So hey, hey, right. amen to that. Amen to that. We're, we're going to uh, journey into a little a little activity we like to do. It's it's, it's a hard challenge. But before we do the activity, uh, Iomas or Neville or Profound, anything that you wanted to to ask before we go into the one word segment? No, let's go. Oh Good. shit! I forgot about this, B. Okay. <laughs> All right. So like, I gotta, I gotta think now. All right. So, <laughs> this, nah, this, I got this, you. I forgot. You be, said, you're gonna hold up an album or something. I have to say what. Go ahead. Yeah. Go what's ahead, the first? Me. I'll hold it up. I'll, I'll name the album too. You know, for folks that listen to the podcast, and you just right, say so the first over here. Just say the first word that comes to your mind. Make that, you make that bigger album. enough. Make that bigger, AP. Let me see what. And that I'll is. and I'll say the name too. So. No, nah, I, I think I, I'm just I'm just trying to like see what you. Okay, go ahead. Okay, here, here we go. I, I didn't see the screen. Go ahead. All right, first word that comes to your mind. This is one. One word: a wolf in sheep's clothing by Black Sheep. Dope album. Dope, dope. album. Um, Mr. Long, you know, dress like. Dope album, man. Like flavor of the year, or whatever. Yes. That's crazy oh, yeah. album, man. Definitely. Right. I, I banged the album so hard, man. You banged still listen it so to hard. it to this day? No, I don't. I don't have. I wish I had those albums in there. I, you know, back then I used to have like CD. You had CDs, a CD collection. Oh, yeah. I lost my CD collection. I might have sold half of it at one point when I was. Dang. You know what I mean? I'm I'm, I'm one of the rare ones that still have CDs. All right. <laughs> yeah, Next I mean, album. It's all, it, right. You can get all that stuff online now, but I used to yeah. like bang the. the Crazy out that yeah, yeah, Black Sheep, I, that, yeah. Like, that was my right. joint, man. Next one, very different sound. This is "Damn" by Kendrick Lamar. <sighs> lyrical, lyrical, mm, lyrical. Yes, mm. is that your favorite Kendrick Lamar album? Yes. Yeah, and then, you know what? I I maybe I didn't give the other albums fair shots. Like I wasn't really like I, I wasn't like a uh, I didn't follow his his albums that I, I didn't listen to his albums like that. Yeah. Um, but I was up on him when he first came out with the AD, ADDH, like the first, when he first kind of was, before he got on really, I was listening right. to his stuff and I heard about him. I knew he was nasty then, but I wasn't, I didn't know he was gonna get that big, but yeah, I, I didn't listen to like the good, what's it, good, good, good kid, bad. Good kid, yeah. bad city, yeah. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't really, I think I heard the album, but I didn't really, but the damn album, that joint, like I just, for some reason, I just got into that album. That album, yeah. that album to me is like a one, like a flawless album, kind of like yeah. a, like an Illmatic. Like one of those oh, that's albums dope. that's from start to finish. Go ahead. Mm. All right, next one, Edutainment by Boogie Down Productions. Ooh. I don't even Ooh. know why you why you even picked that one, but that's that's, <laughs> that's the god man. Um, Edutainment, like one word, um, blueprint. Yeah, hip hop blueprint, blueprint like there you blueprint, go. like. Uh, yeah, we got, man. We got two very more. Big, very, big, very influential artist to for me as an artist. He was very influential. He reminded me that that I was an MC, like. Mm. Living in Chicago, he was a reminder like Akbar. Yeah, stick, and it, stick to it. Like, yeah, go ahead. Just raw, no, man. Raw. No, I was, you know? was going to say that, that when I was listening, you know, to your music, getting ready for tonight, I, you know, I heard, uh, I was reminded of Karis One just because of the depth, you know, of your lyrics. Yeah, yeah. I got, I got, I was happy and blessed uh, to be on a few songs with him, man, which happened later on in my life that. I would have probably never have dreamed to happen when I first listened to his music. Listen to his music when I first heard his music, like South Bronx and The Bridge is Over. Yeah. It just made me happy to hear a MC like he was raw, a raw form. Right. Because that's right. really like what I that's what I fucks with. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, so that's probably why you hear that. And yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, you're good, man. No, you're good. That's why we do this. I'm paying paying homage. Yeah, raw, All right. This is a uh, rawness. Machiavelli. Machiavelli by Machiavelli. Oh man, so deep. Um, that guy. Um, one word. Um, enigmatic. That guy. Enigmatic. Like he just hard to figure that brother out, man. I I, I was a fan more so when that album came out than the whole time that that Pac was around because Pac was so conflicted. But that album is like so. Heavy man, that's heavy. That's a heavy yeah. album. He was a, right. he was just a, a deep brother, man. 
This is the last one. And, you know, Ayo Mas gave you flowers to beginning the show. So I thought we could repay him his flowers. This is deeply rooted. Oh, or deep rooted. rooted. Yeah. Ayo Mas. Oh, and, um, uh, one word. Uh, wow. Fruition. <laughs> uh, wow. Fruition. Like oh, just see. seeing greatness, you know, like. Yeah, being able to see that, that how it just came into fruition, man. Like beauty, beautiful, man. Beautiful album, man. Dope album. I, I banged that too. I was banging that too. Crazy. Hey. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah. I was so happy. I was so happy when I was able to like bang that album, man. Cause that's my brother, man. Uh, la, and la, like, whatever la, conversation la. we had on the sidewalk from that yep. to that, like, come yeah. on, man. La, la. Go ahead. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, fruition, man. Like just seeing, like, yeah, like this, you know, man, just being proud, man. Go I got it. No, I gotta say, if, if anyone out there does, doesn't have this album, has yeah, that's a, a good, that's a good album. Rooted by I O Mas Murad. You gotta listen that's to it. It's Chicago dope. shit right there. Yeah, yeah. dope shit. Dope album. Dope album. Appreciate that's all the albums I have. That's all Gratitude, I have tonight. Man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, those are those are some good ones, man. Uh, Akbar, how do you like people to follow you online? Or do you um, like people to follow I, you? I'm, I'm on I'm on Instagram and I'm um I'm on Facebook. Not not too not, I'm I'm not on there hard, but I need I yeah. need to probably I need to not probably I need to step my presence up. But my, my Instagram is um is A K B Z A R Z like Zulu B A K B Z A R Akbazar. That's my Instagram, A K B Z as in Zulu A R. And my, my uh Facebook is uh I believe it's Akbizy. Mm-hmm. A K B E E Z Y, but um, but my Instagram is is probably the best way to 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 find me. Um, YouTube, I'm on YouTube. If you put my name in, if you put Mental Giants behind it, you'll probably f- find all of my different videos. It'll just lead you from one video to the next. Um, if you like, if you just put Akbar, good food, you know, from there you'll see all the different videos I've done. Yeah. I got, I probably got at least a dozen videos just throughout the different, um, you know, songs I've done and the albums and stuff. I've always tried to put videos out um, along with music. So I got probably about eight or nine good, like, you know, good videos that you people can find on, on YouTube. Find me on YouTube. Uh, look for new music. Um, I'm on all the platforms. My music is available on, on Apple and like the, 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 the albums are available. If you go to Apple, iTunes, AK Bazaar is where you'll find me. A-K-B-Z-A-R. So you can find my music online if you look for it. Yeah. Cool. And I recommend doing just that, y'all, because it's, uh, it's it makes great music. So definitely check that out. Before we get out of here, uh, any last last questions or things you just got to get off your chest, Profound or I.O.? Nah, man, I just want to thank Brother Ock, man, for coming through, man. I really appreciate it, man. Can I can I ask everybody though, like where y'all uh, respectively? Where's everybody at? Oh, uh, me, I'm at, man. I live in uh, Orlando, Florida now, bro. Cool. Okay, you told me that before. Who else? Where, where you I'm at, Io? I'm in uh Toronto, Toronto, wow, Canada. Yeah, true. Yeah. True. True. Yeah. True. Uh, you got to come out here, man. If I get some, I do stuff cracking. Or get, I'd love to get you out here. Maybe How long you like, you been like there for? Second. Like, it's, I want to say it's been like maybe two years, three yeah, years. Yeah, two years. Word. Yeah, that's absolutely. what's up. Yeah, man. Got to get you out here, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I would love to do that. And where you, you and at? Your, you and your nephew, man. Y'all need to get, yeah. y'all, we got a place to lay your head, man. We got to, you know what I'm yeah, saying? It's, Come through, I'm saying, bro. though, I've been here about, I mean, I, I've always heard that there was a scene in T Dot. Yeah. Like there's, yeah. you know, hip hop. Yeah. I know, I know if there is, I know you definitely part of that, I'm sure. No, no, yeah. I've been in school. I'm in school, so I'm not really able to get out there like that. You know what I'm okay. saying? Okay. So, but you but still, but you still, are you recording out there? Oh yeah, no? yeah, yeah. I got my studio. Okay, well, then that's, that's all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All day. That's, that's what's yeah, up then. So, that's what's yeah. up. Definitely. If y'all come out here, we can get some work in. All right. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Word. Yeah, sure. Word. Where you, hey, Till, where you at? Uh, I'm in Cincinnati. Okay. Cincinnati, okay. Ohio. So that's, is that, hence the, the East Coast thing? Because I was kind of confused by the East Coast time. It said yeah, like 10, Cincinnati's 10. on the East Coast. Yeah. yeah, okay, got you. That's what's up, man. Yeah, I appreciate you guys, man, for even inviting me on, bro. Um, okay. And keep doing the, representing the, the culture, man. Keep, you know, keep doing the real hip-hop shit, bro. 
Yeah, no doubt, man. Thank you for being on. We really, really appreciate your time and your presence. And we will definitely be looking forward to the new music for sure. Yep. Cool, man. I'll, I'll do my best not to let y'all down, man. Appreciate y'all. <laughs> you won't. <laughs> oh, hey, Stain. No, no. Hey, Stain, check your email, man. I'm a, I got some stuff coming your way. All right, that's what's up. All right. Peace, y'all. Peace, y'all. Peace, peace, All right, peace. Much love. Much love. Peace, brother. Oh, yeah, Neville's oh. in New York. <laughs> Sorry, Neville. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. Neville's. Oh, shit. Forget about Neville. Hey, yo, I forgot we had, we had like the, hey, yeah. like, it's like the, like, what, Dr. What Doom. Like the six man and shit. Well, yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but where you at? Where you at, Neville? Me, where you, how you were like in a secret location because you had like the Doom mask or something going on. Where you at? Yeah. You yeah. That cave? Yes. Is, yes. He, is he gone? He's gone, man. He, he only wants to talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> like, you don't care where I'm at. Yo, I, I totally forgot he was even. We had like the fifth, the sixth man on the team. Where you at? Queens, Long Island. Oh, you and you and QU. Oh, for yeah. real? Okay, another yeah. East Coast. Another right East on the Coast. border. Yeah, man. Yeah. Where? Where at in Queens? Oh, um, Rochdale. Okay, cool, man. Yeah, I, yeah. Jamalski's in Queens. No, oh shoot! Team. I thought we still he's from Brooklyn. Queens. Wow. All right. Nah, What's nah. Jamalski, Jamalski's from Lower East Side. That's where him and Parker are from. But he, but right. he's in Queens though. He lives in Queens. All right, but big ups to everybody, man. Yeah, man. man. Salute for sure. Hey, you know, since it's a hip hop show and we all represent it where we're from, let's go ahead and do some shout outs before we get out of here. I'll, if if you have a minute, uh, Akbar, I'll save you for last. Uh, to give some shout outs. Profound. Who you want to give a shout out to this week? Man, let me give a shout out to the kids, of course, man. Amir, Zakir, Rosalina, Ariel, Daima, Elijah. Uh, Ayo, Akbar, of course, Neville and Till. Man, Chicago, big up, man. Hip hop, I'm giving, I'm giving a shout out to hip hop, and uh, man, a, a shout out to to for positive energy out here in the world, man. Absolutely. Positive energy out here in the world, bro. That's 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 why I'm at with it today. Word, Ayo, who you got? Man, shout out to Chicago. Shout out to my people out here in Toronto. Um, shout out to my beautiful wife. Uh, shout out to my family in Detroit, my brother Ron, uh, his wife, kids, uh, the whole What's the Irony camp. I just want to shout out my brother Dante, man, Negro League. it would be keeping me fresh with the gear. So, you know, holla at the negroleague.com. So shout out to my brother Dante. Shout out to Fifth um, and Culture Power 45, Taiwan and all of them, man. So shout out, salute. Oh, right and y'all brothers, man, my Boom Bap Chat family. Can't forget yeah. y'all, brother Till, Profound. You know what I'm saying? And man, it's this this tonight having Akbar on, man, is a blessing, bro. Just made like I'm gonna be excited for the for the rest of the week. Just getting <laughs> big up to my big brother Akbar, man. And Dope. GQ too, man. Shout out GQ, man. GQ. Yeah, that's my brother. Oh sure. Okay. Uh, uh, Neville, you got any shout outs for us? From the yes. back cave, for sure, for sure. Um, want to shout out Mom Dukes. Um, who else? Oh, my family in England, and this is this is inspired by Akbar. My family in Jamaica, Kingston, Montego Bay, Kemsill, Maypen. Um, shout out to New York, and yo, know, worldwide, man. Just shout out to everybody, and, and also what Profound said, man. Positivity, man. Let's you know, spread the love. That's it. It's the love movement. Yeah, no, no doubt. Uh, I definitely want to give a shout out to Akbar for being here tonight. Also want to shout out Sean J. Period. Yeah, uh, yeah. Phenomenal producer who's going to be with us next Thursday night. So make sure you come back next Thursday, same place, same time as we yeah. chat with uh, one of the, the dopest hip hop producers, Sean J. Period. And uh, shout out to, uh, like uh, Profound said, Chicago hip hop for sure and the place to be. And uh, really appreciate Akbar for being here tonight. And Akbar, we'll let you get the last shout out and uh, take us away. Go ahead, Akbar. Oh, shout out to you brothers, first of all, for inviting me on the show, man, the Boom Bap Chat. Um, I, this is actually, I want to say my first pod, this is considered a podcast, right? Yeah, yeah. it's podcast form. Yep. This is my first podcast. I've never actually been on a podcast. I know it's hot that people are doing podcasts, but yeah, I appreciate you guys for even having me on, man. Um, Love to my queen, man. Just know that, you know, unconditionally, I'm always going to love you and that everything is, you know, everything is everything. Uh, shout out to my partner, Parker Lee. Know that this album is going to be monumental and classic as, you know, 
nothing that we, we could never do nothing less than that. So, you know, keep mo stay motivated. Uh, shout out to DNA Beats. Thank you for being a mm, brother. Yeah. Uh, shout out to uh, TME Productions, TME Studios, everybody over there from Fred to, you know, Migs to Rhino, you know, Yazzie, White Owl, Long, like the whole crew over there, man. Um, my All my New York family, Savvy, you know, everybody, man. Like, I, there's too many people. Danny Kodak, <laughs> these are all my New York peoples. Shout out to my nephew, of course. Shout out to Money. Um, my other nephew, shout out to my brother, who's, you know, they both, you know, behind the walls right now. You know what I'm saying? When y'all get home, it's going to be glorious because we, we, we working, we building for y'all. So shout out to money, free money. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's, that's my nephew's brother, free money and free my brother. My, they both, I'm just, I'm just giving big ups and, and love to my brothers who's locked up too, man, because during this time, like we can't forget nobody. Um, I lost a lot of people last year. So Shout out to my pops who I lost, man, last year to a lot of the bullshit that's going on, man. You know, shout out to everybody who's out there, man, who's still positive and 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 um and believes that the world is not about right or left or red or blue or the, the world is about what you make it. You know what I'm saying? So don't listen to what people say you should be doing, who you should not like or or, or like, and what you should. You know, everybody's everything's being chosen for you now. Like you even your phone tries to predict what you're gonna think next because it's listening to you. So shout out to the free thinkers out there. You know what I'm saying? We control destiny, you know, so don't forget that. So take your power back. Look out for the album, Mental Giants. I love y'all, love yourself, love God. And on that note we say peace, 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 peace. peace. One.